endometriosis is a chronic gynecological condition that affects about one in 10 women. Common symptoms of endometriosis include severe pelvic pain and irregular and heavy menstrual bleeding, which can significantly impact an individual's day-to-day -day life. Although it is most commonly diagnosed in women in their 30s and 40s, endometriosis can begin in adolescence and can also affect postmenopausal women. With the guidance of patients, researchers, and clinical experts, the Society for Women's Health Research has designed a toolkit to assist individuals with endometriosis in navigating their care. Our Endometriosis Toolkit is a patient empowerment guide that provides easy to understand information and resources on menstrual health and stigma, understanding endometriosis, diagnosing and treating endometriosis, navigating endometriosis through the teenage years, pregnancy, and menopause, and managing a healthy lifestyle with endometriosis. This segment focuses on endometriosis in teens. In endometriosis, tissue that resembles the lining of the uterus grows outside the uterus where it doesn't belong, forming a type of lesion called an implant. When these lesions naturally thicken and bleed during the monthly menstrual cycle, they cause swelling, pain, and irritation to the surrounding healthy tissue. An estimated 200 million individuals worldwide are living with endometriosis, and many more are undiagnosed. Endometriosis is not uncommon to adolescents, ages 10 to 19 years old, and is a leading cause of severe pelvic pain during a girl's period. At least two thirds of young girls with chronic pelvic pain will eventually be diagnosed with endometriosis. In the first two years after a girl gets her period, it is normal for her cycles to be irregular. After that, her cycle will usually become more regular about every four to five weeks. Tracking your period will help you know if they are regular. It can also give your healthcare provider a more complete picture of your symptoms, their severity, and their impact on your daily life. There are health apps that you can use to record your period and symptoms. The Federal Trade Commission provides guidance you can read online about how to select and use health apps while reducing privacy risks. During your period, mild cramps and discomforting symptoms can be normal. But if your periods are so painful that you are missing school and social events, or constantly taking pain medication with little to no relief, you may want to discuss the possibility of endometriosis with your doctor. Common endometriosis symptoms in teens include abnormal pain or menstrual bleeding, stomach issues such as nausea, pain, and bloating, constipation or diarrhea, and trouble sleeping during your period. Stigma that society and cultures place on menstruation can prevent girls and women from voicing their concerns about important period-related symptoms even to their doctor. If you find it difficult explaining to friends or teachers why you miss school, sports, or other activities, you are not alone. 71% of teens feel self-conscious during their period. Just remember that it is always good to discuss your experience and feelings with a trusted friend or family member. You don't have to manage your endometriosis alone. You can also help fight period stigma by talking openly about periods with friends, family, and others, avoiding slang terms for menstruation, not hiding pads, tampons, or other products, and even requesting for better menstrual health education at school. When talking to your healthcare provider, make sure to tell them which symptoms bother you the most and give examples of activities that your symptoms stop you from doing. Also tell your provider the remedies you've tried to manage your symptoms. Putting together a list of questions to ask your provider may help you feel more prepared to discuss your concerns. Some example questions include, how can we know if what I'm experiencing is endometriosis or some other condition? How will you diagnose my condition? What treatment options are available and which ones do you recommend I try? And where can I go to learn more information about endometriosis? A pediatrician may not be familiar with adolescent onset endometriosis, so you may have to visit a gynecologist or other specialist to help you with diagnosing and treating your condition. 
A doctor's visit worksheet is provided in the appendix of SWHR's endometriosis toolkit for you to fill out and take with you on your visit. On it, you can write down your symptoms and their impact on your day-to-day -day activities, a summary of your period diary, your medical history, including family history and past gynecological tests, current medications and other healthcare professionals you see, and notes from your visit. There is no cure for endometriosis, but here are some strategies to help you maintain an active and healthy lifestyle along your journey. Listen to your body. When we exercise or play sports, we often push our bodies to physical limits, but it is important to pay extra attention to changes and pain that might flare up your endometriosis symptoms. Be sure to give your body plenty of rest after long practices and events. Ask for help. You don't have to battle endometriosis alone. Find someone or a few go-to people that you can trust to share your experiences and concerns. You'd be surprised how many individuals you already know that would be willing to be in your circle of support. Ask for accommodation. If you find your symptoms are difficult to manage, ask your doctor to write a note to explain your condition and needs to your teachers and coaches. You can then work with them to be sure you don't miss out on key assignments or fun. For more information about endometriosis or to download a copy of SWHR's Endometriosis Toolkit, a patient empowerment guide, visit our website, www.swhr.org. We also invite you to follow us on social media or sign up for a newsletter to get the latest in science, education, and policy concerning important women's health topics. The Society for Women's Health Research would like to thank everyone who contributed to the development of this toolkit, especially our Endometriosis Network, House Cat Creative Publishing, LLC, and programmatic sponsor, AbbVie.